waiting for us to actually make it onto the stream. Like we are right now. All right. <laughs> um, good afternoon and welcome everybody to uh, the Saturday version, Saturday, May 15th version of the Virtual Pipe Club. Um, and here are the uh, Virtual Pipe Club uh, superstars. Here they are. Say hello to the superstars. Hello. 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 Hola. Hola. There we go. Okay. Um, so, uh, and also, I want to welcome all the people who are um, who are joining us over there on Facebook and YouTube. Just want to say good afternoon if you're over there already. And it looks like we have four, a total of four people. <laughs> but that that hopefully will increase uh, soon. But go ahead and say hello. <laughs> say hi. Um, today, we have um, a special uh, topic, uh, an idea, uh, an invitation. Uh, after we go around the room and talk about what we're smoking and what we're smoking it in, um, David Martinez, does this look familiar? No, no. Comp uh, I do? Yeah, it does. The Kamoi? Yes, it's the Kamoi. And I'll, if, if it gets to be my turn, I'll tell you why I'm smoking that one. Um, so we're going to go uh, round robin and talk about what you're smoking and what you got in it. Um, and then after that, we're going to um, throw out the topic of uh, what was your first pipe? And it could be the, like the very first pipe, especially if you've got it, which would be very cool to take a look at. Or like Tim was suggesting, the, the, the pipe that turned the tide, that changed your point of view, that... That 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 redirected your pipe life. Anyway, uh, that's that's coming up afterwards. But right now, I'm going to turn it over to my buddy uh, uh, Oliver to um, to guide us through um, going around the room and seeing what we're smoking. Yeah, that's. Uh, thank you very much and welcome everybody. Um, before I start with our little warm up, I would uh, give you a little update about our admin group. So we are now. Six people in our admin group for the club. That's uh, awesome. And um, we created also an admin group page. So we bring all our stuff together, all, uh, all your ideas in our special um, group page in the background. So just, you know, there's something going on there. And right now, let me start with a warm-up. So I have today something special for me because it's a different kind of wood Ooh. it's an uh, olive wood and it's a it's a dr brock or no what is a mr brock and it's beautiful called, beautiful yeah. The, yeah it's mr brock yeah. yeah called the pebble I, I like this shape it's it's very special and i have nothing else like this and uh, um oh, i have a lot of like this but it's it's a good smoker it's a flat one it's a big bowl and uh, it's nine mil filtered and i like it it's very good and in it today some mac baron's navy flake so pretty traditional that's it so we have a lot of hands i can see it and let me give the virtual pipe to tim heineck uh, well, hello, everybody. Good afternoon. Nice to see everybody today. And today I'm smoking. Okay. It is a Ronaldo. I think it's called the a scoop in terms of the shape. Now it's, it's, it's not a Peterson like you normally see me with one, but it's, yeah, it's got some Peterson esque kind of things here with the silver spigot. And uh, I am smoking Germain's Ridge old Brown flake, uh, which I purchased from Val Shanahan on Facebook, who, I think has some really great, uh, he sells some pipes and he sells some tobacco periodically. He has some really great uh, deals on pipes. He sells a lot of, a lot of Savinelli's, uh, you know, a lot of Peterson's, a lot of, a lot of prices at good, good uh, pipes at good prices. So, so uh, that's it for me. I'm going to hand off the virtual pipe to, I believe Miguel is next to me. So I will hand it off to him. Uh, thank you, Tim. I appreciate it. So, I guess I'd, I'm not going to bore you with my tobacco. It's uh, the McBaron Pure HH Virginia. And I'm uh, actually uh, smoking this to uh, in it 
is basically uh, my Dunhill Group 3 Red Bark uh, 1972. And uh, yeah, that's what I have. And I'm going to pass the virtual pipe to uh, Dennis. Scatter, keep remembering to unmute here. Morning, afternoon, evening, everyone. I've got a uh, bones pipe of an uh, indiscriminate shape, heavily flawed and absolutely lovely smoke, which uh, will bend an argument there. And in it, I've got uh, uh, my Baron Scottish mixture, Scottish blend, different names for different places. Nice, lovely light smoke for the day. Uh, let's see, who's next? Uh, Matthias, you up? Yeah, thank you. Uh, so I'm uh, smoking my own blend, uh, best blend, just as previous week uh, in a old, uh, what's the name? Uh, a rat race old gallery, uh, small billiard thingy. So yeah, thanks. Uh, Bo, you're next. So, hello everybody. Um, as always, I'm not smoking right now, but what I had today was in this beautiful Werner Eisenreich, one of my favorite pipes ever. Uh, I was smoking the Nerding Eric. <coughs> Uh, tobacco I discovered this week and I'm absolutely in love with it. Smoke it now for, for the second day in a row and uh, really it's it's wonderful. A little bit on the pricey side with uh, I think 14 euros, roughly 14 euros for 50 grams, but it's absolutely worth it. Absolutely love it. Beautiful Virginia, sweet, very lightweight. To me, perfect and I skip them for a any time if I can have this. So let's see who's next. Uh, Rob, your turn. I get off the there. I'm muted. Good afternoon. Good evening. Good morning, everyone. Good to see you from Detroit. Um, is Steve Emmis here today? I don't have a the, the participant view up. Is Steve here? Oh no. Well, you guys know I've admired his golf ball pipe. And so today I am smoking a golf ball meerschaum on my Falcon <laughs> with a little squadron leader. Um, but I'm still jealous of uh, Steve's. This it turned out I bought it on eBay and got a little fooled. It ended up being a squatted, smashed, whatever you want to call it, golf ball. So it's not that full big golf ball that Steve has. So. I'm still in search for that one. Um, so anyway, I will pass that on to what we got here. Come on, participants. Where's my view? There we go. We will go to Bud. How are you doing, Bud? Thanks. Uh, I'm doing good. Greetings, everybody. I'm smoking a slice of uh, golden slice uh, from Orlick, uh, bold and stuff. And it's in a, uh, a brandy pipe, uh, sitting brandy from a bones. And, uh, I'm going to pass it off to, uh, Jason. Hello everybody. Jason here from Maryland, currently smoking some C and D Bayou morning and my Peterson, uh, Sherlock Holmes. I think this pipe is has a pretty uh, deep chamber, good for a uh, long club meeting. And let me see who's got their hand up. I'll take Alvin, Alvin Miller. Well, good afternoon or good, e good morning or good evening, everyone. Uh, I am smoking some HU's English breakfast. I'm having a late breakfast. And in uh, a Savinelli Punto Oro gold sand glass, uh, love it. And uh, 
it's got a pretty big bowl. So I, I, I think uh, it'll help me get through a lot of the meeting, at least maybe one more bowl before the meeting's over. And uh, then I will see, I will pass it on to, let's see here. How about Glenn? Minnesota, Glenn, you're up. Hi. Good day, everyone. Um, I'm smoking uh, today my, um, let's see who made this one. It's a uh, Nording, grade 14. I think it's a bent tomato, maybe. I always wondered about this shape, but uh, pretty decent little pipe. And uh, in it, I'm smoking uh, Treasures of Ireland Limerick from Dan Tobacco. It's a Virginia Flake, about uh, 10 years old. And uh, it's a little dry today, but uh, it's working well. And um, let's see, is my Minnesota partner Peter here today? Uh, if not, how about Ivan? You got your hand up? Hello, hello, hello. Uh, thanks for um, calling me. Uh, Great to be with everyone. I'm smoking. Since we are talking about our first pipes, I have got my very first pipe from probably 1997, thereabouts, when I was a student. Um, this is a Dr. Grau's, um drugstore pipe. I think I paid $4.99, maybe $5.99 for it at the time. So I've just given it a cleanup so I can uh, load some Virginia Perique. Um, I smoked two bowls straight during last week of this during the meeting, and it gave me a bit of a a, a, a nicotine hit. So I think I'll uh, maybe slow it down a bit today. Uh, anyway, great seeing everyone. And uh, uh, another hand up. Uh, how about uh, Steve? Uh, hello, everyone. I'm Steve. YouTube channel Smoking Cardboard. That's why I put it on there. Um, I'm smoking a uh, Peterson Spigot 302 with some um, Yule's uh, Perfection Plug Burley. Um, I'll go to Dimitri. By the way, I'm trying to get Boris to raise his electronic hand, but in the meantime, just want to let everybody know that his hand has been up this whole time. Yeah. He's <laughs> He's going to get stuck in this position. Somebody's going to have to come out and help him get his hand down. So <laughs> he was actually my choice, but nobody calls me first. <laughs> okay, hello everybody. Well, um, I'm taking break from uh, pipe making and uh, go to pipe smoking. And uh, this is the first pipe I ever bought. My very first pipe. I don't have it anymore. I got it, it was a state pipe. I got it from my old landlady. She just gave it to me. I had no idea what I'm doing and I completely destroyed the pipe. It uh, just burned through. But this was first one that I bought. It's uh, Joby Avanti, uh, French made billiard. And I bought it, of course, at Nat Sherman in New York City. Um, I I think it was like 1994, 95, and uh, it still smokes great. And I'm smoking my furry uh, continent blend in it. Okay, and let's see who I pass it to. Uh, Justin. Hello. Justin here from uh, Connecticut. Smoking a little bit of a uh, Gowith Navy Flake in my Mearsham Church Warden. And uh, I gotta say, Navy Flake is really good. It's a lot different than, like most Navy Flakes are like a Virginia Perique, maybe with some rum splashed on. But uh, this is Virginia and uh, Latakia but it's like a small amount of Latakia. It's just in the background, you get the retro hail. It's fantastic. That's one of my new favorites. Um, are we doing the uh, first pipes right now or are we doing that after? 
uh, after, I believe. We we okay. uh, I have it planned for after. So, but, okay, but okay. Listen, we never uh, say no. <laughs> so, <laughs> you know, oh, except uh, except let me interrupt. So let me interrupt. We have uh, some more new guys in the room, and they don't know that they have to raise their hand with the tool to make sure that everybody can tell what's going well, on. I'm not raising anybody's hand if you're talking about tools. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we do say no sometimes. <laughs> Ban that boy. Uh, well, I'll, I'll pass the pipe. We'll do that after. Uh, how about Mike Rizzo? Hello. Thank you, Sarah. What's up, everybody? Uh, I'm smoking my... Uh, Costello Canadian, uh, one of my favorite pipes. And in it, I'm smoking uh, HU, I believe it's Yenemin Flake. <clears throat> I was kind of hoping uh, either Oliver or Jurgen could uh, tell me that. And then I have also have a bowl of, um, again, I don't want to butcher it, but it's Alstem Crater with the crater plug. I'm sure that's not the way you pronounce it, but one of my German friends could probably Help me with that. Um, I'm glad to see uh, smoking cardboard Steve in the house, and I will pass it to Mr. Cerigliano. Mike, thank you very much. Um, I am uh, <clears throat> currently enjoying a beautiful day here in the Jersey Shore, and I am smoking my little Ashton Brindle that I picked up from Jimmy Craig at the Chicago Pipe Show uh, a couple uh, a couple years ago, I guess, uh, 2019, whenever they had it before COVID, and uh, at the Friday uh, pre-sale, which if anybody gets a chance to go, definitely check it out. Some great deals there. Um, in it, Mike actually had me wanting to go back and revisit the HU, um, the uh, Louisiana Perique Flake. What is it? Um, broken Flake, Louisiana Broken Flake. Yeah, Broken and uh, Broken Flake. That's right, the Vapor. And uh it's a couple years old now. It's really good. Awesome. Uh, I forgot how much I enjoyed this one. And uh, I'm uh, actually about done with that. I'm going to smoke my um, Eldritch uh, patient, Dr. Silence pipe. And um, I'm going to try for the first time this uh, Savinelli 145, the 145th anniversary I picked up because I really, I really like Sansa Pokro and Dark Fired. Uh, and they're using that in this. I'm kind of curious if it's going to be kind of similar to Sansa Pokro or not, but uh, that's what I'm smoking today. And uh, I will pass what, the ball to- What did you do to your finger? That's what I was wondering too. <laughs> this is my uh, Mr. Puppet uh, finger. Um, this is what this is what happens when you don't respect the wood lathe. So um, I uh, got my finger, I wasn't paying attention and got my finger a little too close. Uh, I was working on a, a thin, long shanked uh, Levat and- uh, and uh, yeah, did some damage to it. Thankfully, I was very lucky. Uh, only only uh, minor damage. It could have been a lot worse, but uh, yeah. <laughs> so there you go. Barely a so, flesh wound, I hope. Um, yeah, you know, <laughs> sheared the nail in half, did, did some other damage to the finger, but nothing's broken. So thankfully, it, like I said, it could have been a lot worse. I, I learned a valuable beginner lesson there <laughs> on respecting. So um, I will uh, pass it over to David Martinez. Thank you very much, Andrew. Um, I'm smoking a freehand, uh, I mean, Stanwell. And I'm making, it's not my blend, of course, but I'm making a mix of Scudo and uh, Deluxe uh, Navy Flake from um, Dunhill. And it's as spicy as, because both blends were over five years. So I'm really enjoying the Perique in, in my nose and tingles a lot of stangy. So really, really good to, to smoke. Um, let's see, I'm gonna pass it to Boris because I know he was waiting for a long time and he's probably tired of hanging his and holding his hand. Uh, am I on mute or can you hear me? Okay. Thank you. I have no idea how to uh, lift that we had, so I had to do that old fashioned way. Uh, I'm smoking a Amphora Kentucky in that uh, brief Wendy. And have you noticed I'm still sitting in light, not in darkness, like 
you have might be used to see me. Uh, I saw Thor game in a few moments ago. Are you here, Thor? It's your turn next. Thor? Did Jurgen come in? Nope. So Boris, you're going to have to pick somebody else. Okay. Uh, uh, Tim Hannibal. Tim was already. Another one, please. Okay. <laughs> okay, uh, let me start over again. Thank you, Boris. Uh, this morning I'm smoking my uh, Peterson Dracula 999, and in it I'm smoking Seattle Pipe Club Wild Man, which is an English crumble cake. Uh, really good. Uh, I really like this stuff. But, uh, anyway, yeah, so good morning. Uh, I'm in uh, San Diego County, California, the United States. And I'd like to pass the pipe to uh, Ramachandran. Thank you, Tim. Mm -hmm. Haran from India. A very pleasant good evening, good afternoon, good morning, everything. And today I'm smoking my Mirsham Line Falcon. And in it, I'm smoking uh, Old Dog Crans, Red Label. And now I would like to pass it on to Ayan Reed. Ayan Reed. Thank you. I'm in London. This is uh, Ben Rhodesian, I guess, which I bought in G. Smith's down Charing Cross Road, which sadly ain't there anymore. And in it, I've got also got some McBaron Scottish blend. And I'll pass it on to Louis Carbone. Well, thank you, Ian. Hello, everyone from uh, sunny, beautiful Queens, New York City today. Uh, today, I am smoking some 2015 uh, Stockaby uh, Luxury Bullseye Flake, uh, aged very well in my typical mason jar. Tastes really good. Uh, I'm smoking it in a lovely Will Purdy finned tadpole. W did a wonderful job on this pipe, it's beautiful grain that I purchased back in 2011 at the Chicago show. And uh, I will pass, so let's go, uh, let's go down south, passing the virtual pipe to our friend John in North Carolina. Good day, everyone. I hope everyone's doing well. I'm in fuel-free North Carolina at the moment. And uh, today I'm uh, spoken through uh, a set of Amphora sample packs. So today I'm into Black Cavendish. I'm smoking this in a, a, a Rossi, rusticated bent apple. I think that's about enough adjectives for it. <laughs> So, so I will pass this on to, let's see, I don't, I don't see any hands on this page. Let's try the next page. Stuart in Australia, how's everything down under? Down under's fine. Um, thank you very much. And uh, this morning I've got uh, the uh, Peterson uh, Professor, Sherlock Holmes, uh, smooth. And uh, we'll be smoking in it uh, some sweet Kalani. So uh, it's uh, starting to get cooler down here. Um, so we're uh, heading into that lovely pipe smoking season. Uh, I always reckon that winter is the ultimate in uh, uh, enjoying a pipe. Uh, Right, who will I pass it to? Uh, I don't have an electronic hand, but ah. if, if you want to pass it on to me, uh, I'll take it. Okay, DDR, it's all yours. Um, well, um, I held this up earlier because this is a pipe that I got from uh, David Martinez. Um, it's a Kamoy, a rust, is it? No, it must be a sandblast. Um, and I also, am smoking the um, 
Salvinelli one forty fifth anniversary blend, and these go together because uh, David has trained all of his pipes to only do well with vapors and vapors. Um, he says no, but I'll tell you what, this one is a very good um, pipe for vapors. And so I, um, I'm really enjoying it. I really enjoy it. a lot of the sweetness from the Virginias are, are coming through. So it's, it's a little, um, it's a little like having a soda pop, but in a good way, like the aftertaste of having, um, maybe like, like a, a, a creamsicle kind of in your mouth there. Um, and, uh, just give you a report, but more will come later. And I'm interested to see what you think, Steve. The the um, the tin note was like chocolate covered cherries, but but like boozy. So you know, if you can imagine a uh, um, uh, uh, whatever that great uh, chocolate company that that puts booze in all their chocolates, it's like that. Really, but none of the booze comes through the smoke. But anyway, it's very delightful. I recommend it. And David, thank you for the pipe because it's perfect for this. this um, I'm glad it smokes well to you. I really appreciate it. I love it. I, I, I pulled it out perfectly for this. Um, Kent, three, four-wheel, three-wheel, two-wheel piper, um, just got back in. Kent, I, I know that you were looking for your... Um, electronic hand. I'm just going to go ahead and pass it over to you, brother. Well, thank you. Thank you. I still don't know what's going on. I had that uh, uh, ability last week and it's not here this week. So I don't know what's going on. Computer gremlins. Uh, so I will be smoking my uh, club pipe and uh, with some uh, Orlick golden slice. Um, I'm, I'm practicing. I'm in training. I That's will good. pass it. I'll pass it to. Uh, I don't know who's gone, so I have no idea. So we have some more names, see. like Amir, maybe. Yes, perfect. Hello, everybody. We can hear me well. Thanks, Ken. Hello. So um, today I'm smoking my uh, collaboration squad bulldog and a bulldog. Uh, and uh, with uh, Cornell and Deal Junkyard Doll, and I'm getting dizzy. <laughs> Nicotine in this is very, very serious. So uh, just finishing up the last quarter of the bowl. And um, I'm passing the pipe to Matthias. Have you gone? Yeah, I've already been. Thank you. Anybody else? <laughs> what about Randall? How do, gentlemen? How are you doing today? I'm uh, working on this wonderful pipe. I love this uh, virtual pipe club 2020 Bones pipe. It's just a great smoker, and I uh, I use it a lot with some, uh, believe it or not, some Prince Albert in it. I've got a little. A little tiny pinch or two left, and I'm, I'm working on it. And I Is love he it. In a can? Say what? Is Prince Albert in a can? No, no, he's in a tub. <laughs> oh, well, you best still, but <laughs> he might drown. Yeah. <laughs> Who's volunteering? What about Rhett? Uh, at at Roden. Yeah. Oh, there, I do have a mute. <laughs> Sorry, sitting here smoking my um, virtual pipe club, uh, consolidated cigar tobacco. I'm not real sure it's a Virginia Perique. Probably, and I got it from Paul's Pipe Shop at our last meeting. I don't know how old it is. Interesting, not sure I like it yet. Am I supposed to send it to somebody else then? Yes, that's the plan. Oh, okay. 
means I've got a, sorry, I had to get on my phone. My iPad overheated. Anybody got their hand raised there? Not yet anymore, but I see Fred. What about Fred? There we go. Not smoking anything right now, uh, but earlier I smoked a, a local tobacco shop, uh, John Dingler in St. Charles. Their Virginia Slices, probably a uh, Sutliff, but it's very enjoyable. Hope everybody has a, a great day. I missed last week, but uh, looking forward to the meeting. And anyone else left? Ryan, let's Hi, Ryan. Hey, everybody. Um, <clears throat> so I'm smoking in a, a Rosi. Um, I don't really know what the shape is. I just picked it up this week. It looked interesting. It's okay. I don't. I don't love it. I wouldn't necessarily recommend it. And uh, smoking a blend from a tobacco mist, a tobacco blend in Lake Forest, California, called Ebony. Some sort of aromatic. I wouldn't recommend that either. So <laughs> two for two there, right? Two strikes. <laughs> That's yeah, a right. perfect day for you. Yeah. I think you better, I think you better switch to cigars younger. right now before it gets any worse. One more strike and Bud's going to call you out. <laughs> Jump in there, DDR. <laughs> um, is there anyone else that I think I may be batting cleanup today? Well, that's good. And um, that's a yeah. good segue to uh, – uh, so for, so the, here's your homework, guys. Uh, this week you've got to figure out where your electronic hand is. So um, – <laughs> We can do that. It was actually a terrific idea. Uh, and so for those of you over there on uh, Facebook and YouTube who are watching, I want to make sure that um, you knew that I was watching. So they were sharing what they were smoking too. So we've got some brown twist going on over there. Um, we've got some Peter Stokeby happening uh, on, uh, um, on the uh, internet uh, group there. I'm sorry, I'm trying to read and talk at the same time. That never works, does it? Um, and, uh, and yeah, so remember that as we have these conversations here in the Zoom room, that you guys out there on uh, Facebook and, and YouTube land are just as much a part of the group as well, although you're not as cool, uh, I just have to say, uh, not as cool as, as the Zoom room crew, these, these guys. Give, give it a wave, Zoom Room. By the way, DDR, we probably should have um, had a Zoom class on how to find your hand for the technically, uh, yeah, proficient people on, on yeah. Zoom Room. Yeah, I, I, <laughs> um, we, we, I'm going to stop that conversation find, right there before it gets any worse because I know you guys, right? Yeah. Find your hand and pull it out. <laughs> See, <laughs> it's just it's just going to get downhill from there. Uh, and and uh, Steph is here, uh, and so let's be gentlemen. Although I've heard her swear before. She's more of a sailor than I am, I think. Um, so, ladies and gentlemen, we had an idea that I want to, and I know that some of you guys came a little bit after, and also over there um, on uh, Facebook and YouTube who came in a little bit later. So we had this idea today that we could talk about first pipes, like, your starter pipe, um, and uh, or if you if you don't any longer have that starter pipe, tell your story about your starter starter pipe, and uh, you could uh, we'll really find out a lot about that. And if you have, or um, as Tim suggested, not just the actual starter pipe, but maybe a pipe that came along in your life that sort of changed the trajectory of your pipe smoking. Um, and so I'm going to kick it off so that you guys will maybe see some ideas for yourself when you, when you talk about it. So I, I've told this story before. My first pipe, I don't even remember because it was so awful. It was so bad. And my selection of, of pipe tobaccos was equally ill-advised. Let's put it that way. Uh, and I, I did it all because I thought it would impress girls to smoke a pipe. And so that's, again, three strikes uh, right there. <laughs> That's not going to work. That didn't work <laughs> at all. Um, and so the story is that I, I rediscovered pipe smoking uh, after I had uh, surgery for uh, what turned out to be a benign tumor. And I was, I was uh, recuperating uh, and was bored to, out of my mind because I had stopped going to work 
for a while and, and started watching YouTube videos and came across pipe smoking. So um, long story short, I went to eBay and bought this pipe, a tiny little guy. And, and when I bought it, 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 it came, it arrived in about as bad a shape as you could imagine a pipe to be. Like I didn't see it on eBay, but that giant crack, you can see where this is here, a giant crack down and, a, and almost a burn through down at the bottom, completely oxidized stem and the whole thing like this. And so um, I gave it some TLC and um, filled in the crack with gold. So this is gold and epoxy right there cleaned up the stem and all the other loving things, restained it and, and started, this is what I smoked for a long time, just this pipe. And um, it's a, it's not a great pipe, but boy, is it dependable. You could, and it's knock around. Like I could take this camping, I could take this fishing, I could, you know, bathe the dog, whatever. And this pipe would always, always come through. I've traveled with this pipe a lot when I had to go on the road. Um, it w apparently probably was a really good pipe because there's a very nice place right there for a company stamp or a maker's mark and it's all worn away so i have no idea what it is but this changed the trajectory of my smoking and and based on this pipe i'm that's why i'm here today because otherwise i wouldn't be here and that's my story and let me pass it over um let me pass it over to mike rizzo and see where he's going to go from there so I don't have my first pipe. Um, it was a horrible pipe. I got rid of it. Uh, but this pipe, this Costello, was one of, if not the first Costellos that I got, which, um, depending on how you look at it, if you ask my wife, she might say it wasn't a good thing, but sent me down the rabbit hole of acquiring as many Costellos and Radice's as I could. Um, and it's one of those... For me, once I went Costello and I just saw the quality and, and how well they smoke and the craftsmanship of them to go a different direction. So I ended up selling or trading in or trading most of the pipes and I ended up getting a bunch of Costellos. So, um, yeah, this one was the reason why I went down that, that road and brought me to... Uh, basically just all Italian pipes these days. Um, I guess if we're doing the whole pass thing, I'll pass it to, uh, to Rob. Give me a muted. Thanks, Mike. Um, I got a little story behind mine. This is my first pipe. Well, I should say my second. My first one I had was when I graduated from high school. And um, I love to play basketball. And I started it as soon as I graduated smoking a pipe. But that's the thing. I'm graduating. I'm gonna... So um, I went to play my first basketball game in, uh, in October. So I've been smoking a pipe for probably about three months. And, uh, I was really sucking wind. <laughs> and uh, I went out to my car and I broke that pipe. <laughs> and I didn't smoke a pipe again until 2017. And so this was the pipe that I did. And um, I ordered it from Pipes and Cigars, and it was supposed to have been a billiard. As you can see, it's not a billiard. Um, I don't even know what shape you'd call that. So if somebody wants to chime in, you can. Um, no name on it. Just says sandblasted on on the, the little uh, nameplate that David was talking about. So maybe it was a sandblast of David originally. Um, but they sent me the wrong pipe. They sent me the wrong tobacco. So when I contacted them, they said they were out of the pipe. And this was the only one they had left in the series that they were doing. And they were sorry about the tobacco. And they'd replaced the tobacco with the tobacco I ordered. And I said, okay, and I'll send back the tobacco that you sent me, which was three cans. And I think it was uh, uh, Gatsby, Navy Flake, uh, Eileen's Dream. No, Eileen's Dream was one of the ones they sent me. 
Um, but I forget what they all were. And they said, no, nope, keep them all. And they sent me $50 in gift certificates. And I always thought that was pretty cool of them. Um, so that's my story. And um, I'm going to go ahead and pass it on to my good buddy, Ed, because I'm not sure what was his first bite. Uh, my, <laughs> mine, and it's, it's buried in my office somewhere, was a Dr. Graybo. Um, Rob and I would, Rob, uh, Rob and I would smoke cigars, I don't know, two, three times a year. And, uh, my wife always hated it. And she's like, but I always like the smell of cigar or of pipe. So I, uh, went, picked up a, um, Dr. Graybo and Captain Black from the local tobacconist. Um, and I started smoking that and I, you know, weird experiences as I first started, I didn't realize what that pipe filter was or how often to change it or you know, some of those little things. And then uh, Rob and I started smoking more frequently. And then I got, uh, I got a church warden in Estes Park, Colorado. Um, and that got me smoking more and more. And now, well, the rest is history. I don't know how many pipes I have now. <laughs> no more than 11 a year, Ed. Uh, I, I buy no more than 11 pipes a year. This year I was told only five and I think I'm at three. <laughs> Yeah, right. It's early in the year yet, though. So, <laughs> it so, is. so Ed, Ed, you only buy eleven a year because the twelfth one you get is a usually a, a a gift. No, so there's this there's this interesting loophole in the company I work for in the insurance, and it it I have to sign a statement that I have no more than eleven pipes a year. That's oh, what? <laughs> so that's the loophole that I hold to. <laughs> The last pipe I did buy, I think I posted out there, was the uh, peanut shell that June was making when we had the uh, uh, the Paul's virtual tour. Um, so I was smoking that the other night. Um, very enjoyable. Was that insurance policy one, a life insurance policy that your wife wrote up? <laughs> no, no, it was. It's the it's the health insurance policy. Wow. So, go figure. Hey, so, Ed, tell yes. them what you. That's a good health insurance. <laughs> Ed, tell them what you were smoking in the peanut. Oh, <laughs> one of one of Paul's uh, blends is called the walnut blend. So I was smoking the walnut blend in the peanut shell pipe from Paul's pipe shop. Ooh. So it was, and it's the first time I'd had that one. I, I definitely recommend the Arrowhead over the the walnut. So. And Jim, since you were asking questions, why don't you go next? Okay, I, you might regret this, but anyway, <laughs> <laughs> um, my I was 17 years old working in a at a Texaco gas station, and back then they had full service, of course, and uh, you know where you check oil, wash windows, uh, check the tire pressure, put uh, air in the tires if they needed it. Did you wear high school? And the first pipe that I uh, uh, actually had, I, I made out of a uh, tire pressure gauge. I, I had two of them in my pocket, one for checking tire pressure and the other one I gutted out. And you know, a tire pressure gauge is a very small bowl. And so you asked me what type of pipe was my first one. It was a hash pipe. Uh. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> that's my first pipe. I don't have it anymore. And oh, by sorry. the way, for any government agencies listening to this, uh, just uh, that's metaphor. That's uh, yeah, that, 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 uh, yeah, of course it is. It, it's happy all the time um, on Saturdays and Sundays for health. Okay, something like that. Anyway. Um, yeah, the other first actual uh, tobacco pipe that I got um, were given to me uh, by a dear friend that I worked with. He gave me this whole pipe collection. I think I've told this story before. And when he stopped smoking a pipe, he gave them all, all those pipes to me. And I really didn't know much about them, but I do remember now that there was a bunch of uh, dunghills and I, uh, I got rid of them when I stopped smoking and I, 
regret it, but now it gives me fun to go around buying more pipes. But I will pass mine. Let's see, how about uh, Amir? Did you uh, share about your pipe yet? Hey, thanks. Uh, so my first pipe, uh, that was like, uh, what, uh, 10 years ago? It was a uh, Peterson uh, Church Warden. So the first pipe is a church warden that's got to be rare. But the reason I got into pipe smoking was Love of the Rings. So I was like looking at Gandalf and Bilbo all smoking church warden pipes. And I was like, yeah, why not? So uh, I bought this pipe, uh, learned to smoke in it, um, got ill advised with uh, aromatics, very hot aromatics. Uh, but that pipe itself is really badly drilled. It is um, not the airway to the pipe, the stem should meet uh, the airway in the stomach. So it's actually like this. So I do not know anything about uh, pipe engineering at the time. So the airway is uh, very restricted. And I was um, you know, not furious, but I was always trying to find a way uh, how to smoke cooler. Until I went to a pipe meet, a pipe gathering, and I got this pipe. Well, the church warden is no longer with me. So I got this pipe. It's also a Pearson. I got it for free. <laughs> it's a Killerney uh, billiard. And uh, this pipe is drilled perfectly. Very nice. And when I changed to this pipe, I found out that my smoking techniques were not that bad after all, you know? So that got me into studying uh, pipe engineering in detail, you know, on how to choose pipe because um, I only let myself buy one pipe a year. And if any year I get two, it means I bought one and my wife bought another one for me. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, uh, that pipe, uh, this is my first artisan pipe. After the Pearson, I get this one. It's, just, it's the same design. It's by Marek from Republic Czech. So uh, this is what hooked me up on artisan pipes. You know, with the price and um, the signature shape, uh, everybody knows it's his pipe. So that's what gets me into uh, buying artisan pipes and asking everybody to look for an artisan pipe, at least one. You need to try one, All right? And uh, yeah. If, I want to talk about all my pipes. It's going to be long. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, all in all, uh, my pipes were not that expensive. You know, I've, I've learned to uh, buy a pipe that's below $250. Uh, it gets the job done. Whatever else, uh, you know, it's just more aesthetics. And... Um, uh, who the maker is. I think that's it. Right. So uh, I'm going to pass it to uh, Boris. He got some interesting pipes. Boris? Um, me or Boris the Piper? Uh, yeah, you, Boris. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, uh, same here. I don't have my first pipe anymore. This was some kind of, of basket pipe as maybe with with a lot of other guys i think it was in my 20s or something like that and i remember that a friend of mine uh, was starting smoking a pipe he also wanted to i think impress some some girls or whatever and of course with him it also did not work and um i tried around with this basket pipe and uh, I smoked a little and, and it did not really work for me. So I, I set everything aside and a, a couple of years of later, um, I started smoking cigars and I was trying a little bit uh, what else is there. And at that time, uh, the guy I was working with as a birthday present was giving me this Winslow uh, pipe of the year and at at that point I thought hell this is 
so ridiculous spending so much money for a pipe i could never imagine spending myself so much money <clears throat> what did i know at that time um so i was playing with this pipe and um i hear a lot of uh voices saying never buy an expenses pipe as as a first pipe i would say mm, think about it because with this pipe the smoking experience was completely different i still made tons of mistakes but uh, this pipe was hell like forgiven it's still working like a charm i absolutely love this thing um however i stopped with pipe smoking for a couple of years and then it happened that some years ago my parents were giving me a whole bunch of pipes they were receiving from a neighbor who was passing away and he was a pipe smoker and they told me well do whatever what you want with it don't smoke them uh, rework them sell them i said yeah yeah i do that okay i reworked them and not sold any one of them and this was for me the beginning of this addictive journey into pipe smoking there was a downhill amongst them it was some beautiful uh, italian pipes uh, caminetto uh, and so on and so on um and suddenly I had maybe 30 pipes on my hand and I smoked and then and I started studying about pipe smoking was all about that. And you yeah, don't ask me how many pipes I have today. It's it's a mess. And uh, the I think this was at that time, maybe 200 uh, euro or something like that. I passed that mark quite often. Um, so, yeah, times had changed um let's see um elvin tell us about your first pipe well i think i i i had my first i don't have my like ddr i don't have my first pipe i don't even know what happened to it it was a pipe i bought back in my 20s and then uh four daughters having four daughters i hardly had time to sit down and light anything for a few years but uh after that old yeah, one was in high school, I organized the motorcycle club and all the guys were cigar smokers. So I started smoking cigars and that's what I did for several years. And still occasionally smoke a cigar, but you know, I went into a local pipe shop, pipe shop to get some, a cigar of 2014 or 15, something like that. And, I, and there's some guys in there smoking pipe so I just joined them and I said you know what and I enjoyed myself so much just chatting with them I gotta go get a pipe I feel left out here I feel out of out of place so I went up to the counter and said what pipes do you have and, and all that and they really didn't have a very good selection they all they had so they had this Savinelli alligator I think it was the first year they came out with the alligator and it's either the most god awfulest pipe you've ever seen or the most unique pipe you've ever seen depending on your perspective but at any rate, that's my, I smoked it, it smoked great. And after uh, uh, getting back into it, I decided, okay, I'll start getting more pipes. And I bought it. And after a few years, I said, okay, I better buy a pipe cabinet that has a cap limit on how many pipes it will hold. Otherwise uh, my PAD would have got out of Did out it work? Control. <laughs> yes, out of control. So, so now I've got a pipe cabinet full of pipes, but I try to do my best to uh, uh, trade in a pipe or sell a pipe if I'm going to get another pipe, and that's getting even more difficult. So we'll see. But anyway, that's my first one, and it's obviously it's it means a lot to me because it, it helped me develop a friendship with some guys I'm still close friends with, and uh, did the pipe smoking, and that's kind of my story there. And let's see, let me see. I'll bet you. David, have you told your pipe story yet, Martinez? No, but I can start. Thank you. Okay. I, I mentioned before a little bit of it. Um, when I came to college, to the Brown University, my roommate, Korean roommate, he smoked like a chimney cigarettes, and he gave me a big Kiseru pipe from Korea. So I was thinking what to get him. And I went to the tobacco shop, and I got two basket pipes, one for him, one for me. I asked the tobacconist, and uh, he gave me... Um, um, capstan, like a flake for a starter, not really easy. And I, we didn't know how to feel that, how to light it, how to do anything. So after maybe two, three flakes, I just gave up and gave it to him. 
And when I came back on first vacation, of course, you know, we take care of our passports not to lose it or anything. So I just put it in the in the box where my dad keeps everything. And I noticed he had three of, of his like college years back. He didn't smoke much anymore. So this is the original 307 from him from the 60s. This is the pipe that I will take over my collection, not only because it belongs to my dad, but mostly because he smokes like a champion. I will take it to an island with Fillmore, this one in particular. I don't need dunghills, I don't need artisans, I don't need nothing. This Peterson, simple Peterson. And at the same time, he got this 314 as well, which is way smaller than 307, as you guys can see. I, I don't smoke this one much anymore. Um, and he got this, this Samrock that I was surprised. Samrock, you know, is the second for Peterson. And I can't believe this pipe is the second of, of Peterson, just because I don't know if you can guys see it, but Look at the grain and the bird's eyes everywhere. And I got impressed with this one. So I tend to smoke this much often. Unfortunately, my dad broke it. This one, I guess he just unscrewed it like when it was hot. And I have to put this band, but it smokes like a champion too. But this one, it's the one I will take. If my kid doesn't smoke after me, I'm going to be buried with this one. I'm not selling this one. Um, and I'll give it to Tim Heinick. Thank you, David. Uh, another great Peterson story. Um, well, you know, I started off like uh, many of us, you know, with a you know not so great pipe, you know, yellow bowl and some apple tobacco, and you know, you, you kind of know about you know how those stories go. And then I went <clears throat> went to uh, went. <clears throat> went to Penn State University and I was still smoking pipes and, you know, going into tobacco shops and, you know, smoking mostly aromatics. That's what I found mostly in, you know, in the, in the tobacco shop at Penn State. And then for me, I, this is not necessarily a, fir a, a first pipe, but this is a pipe that seemed to turn the tide for me because it's when I came to Boston and I needed to go find some tobacco and I Walked, I went, you know, looking around where are the tobacco stores in Boston, you know, because I wanted to go into the, one of those stores and found this place called L.J. Peretti's. So, uh, you know, I just happened to wander in there one day and, you know, and I'm thinking, OK, well, we're going to have a lot of aromatics, you know, just like the other places. Yeah. And of course, they had a few aromatics there, but they also had a whole bunch of other things that I hadn't seen before. And in this big glass jar, there was this tobacco in a shape I'd never seen before. It was this thing called Scottish Flake. So. I thought, gee, that's really interesting. And I went to go smell it. And I thought, gee, it doesn't smell like chocolate raspberries. It smells like something else. It smells really sweet, smells really tobacco-y and just really good. So I thought, you know, I think maybe I'm going to try some of this in addition to buying this pipe that was actually a Paredes pipe, one of their, one of their uh, you know, very nice straight grains. It wasn't very expensive, but um, you know, I wound up buying this. And that really turned the tide for me because also in that store, they also had Whole bunch of cans of tobacco and there was these cans there they were like uh, brown and green i wondered about what are those things and of course that led me down the path of mcclellan's and i think just that from that point on it really um you know, that's what really started everything as far as you know smoking more non-aromatic quality tobacco virginias and englishes and and of course buying more and more expensive pipes and all that stuff for the last 40 years ago, and that's kind of where I'm at, you know, I have no money, got pipes, but no money. So <laughs> how it goes. I'm going to ask Patrick Grant to uh, share his story of his first pipe. And by the way, <clears throat> I want to just uh, compliment Bud for uh, being the only one who apparently uh, thought to raise his hand. So <laughs> just don't forget Bud's over there with his hand raised electronically. <laughs> we got two now with Louis. There we go. <laughs> Patrick, tell us your story, brother. Well, since no one is volunteering, I'll stick my big mouth in the group here. Uh, my first pipe 
with something I no longer have for a dang good reason. Uh, sounds like most of you guys were smart enough to at least start with a K-Woody or a Yellow Bowl or something that was potentially halfway decent. I, on the other hand, went to high technology, the pipe, which I don't know if any of you remember in the 70s was a plastic piece of monstrosity that burned my lips, burned my mouth, and killed any interest at all in pipes. So, and I think I was a junior in high school at the time, back in about uh, 19, what was it, 74. So I then was about a mile from a decent pipe shop called David's Briar Shop in Omaha, Nebraska. So after about a year not loving cigars, I finally bit the bullet and went to David's Briar Shop, which, and I told him all my fun times and showed him the pipe. And he, after laughing for a while, he then sold me this, a nice, uh, trying to get this thing centered here a GBD prehistoric that I still have. I think I bought this in, what, 73, 72, something like that. And uh, taught me how to pack correctly and introduced me into something called an English blend, which smoked cool, smoked good, taught me how to pack it. And I was there for the next two years until they finally got disgusted enough with me that they made me a salesman part-time for the next four years as I went through college and law school. So you know, if, if it wasn't for a brick and mortar pipe shop who taught me how to do things right, I wouldn't be talking to you guys right now. So here's a thumbs up for local brick and mortar shops that can teach people the right way. Let's see, somebody wave their hands here so I can see who's next. Uh, let's see, uh, Louis Carboni. Lewis, I thought let me, un let me unmute. Yes, thank there you. you are. Thank you very much, Dennis. Uh, okay, so I actually do have my first pipe that I ever. Well, the first pipe I ever smoked, as I mentioned maybe before, uh, was one of my father's pipes that I snuck out into the alleyway, as you may recall I mentioned. Um, but <clears throat> way back in 1976. I had squirreled away my pennies from summer jobs, and I went to the uh, local tobacconist, uh, which was Arnold's Pipe Shop uh, back in Queen Center Mall at the time. And uh, I was 15 years old. My father took me to, to the shop, and I purchased this pipe, which is still holding up pretty well. It's um, a, a Churchill's, which I believe is or was or was or is i think i don't know if it still exists a, a, a pipe shop tobacconist uh so i i guess it's a shop branded pipe churchill's uh the other nomenclature on it is italy and inverness uh, 911 so um this pipe <laughs> started it all for me way back when uh it uh, ran through many aromatics through this pipe and um, it's what got me started on my, on my quest. Um, first pipe in my collection. Uh, it wasn't until, well, within the next, within that decade, the next decade, uh, I don't know how, but I started receiving, uh, back then uh, you would get these photograph mailers uh, in the mail uh, and uh, photographs of all pipes from, uh, uh, the first one I ever got was, from the old Virginia Tobacco Company. And that uh, led to Barry Levin sending photo mailers. And that's what really uh, opened my eyes to real uh, artisanal pipes and uh, you know good pipes. And, um, and I took off from there, uh, whatever I could squirrel away, whatever money I could squirrel away, um, I, uh, I would make some purchases here and there. Again, at the time, I was uh, heavily smoking aromatics, and um, that's uh, that was pretty much my start. So I still have this pipe. Uh, I won't tell you how many pipes in my collection that I have, uh, but there's quite a few. And uh, but this is the one that started it all. So I still have it. It's in really nice shape too, Lewis. It's in great shape. 
uh, I, I, you know, I always take, try and take care of the rims, you know, of all my pipes, uh, clean them up real well. It's got an acrylic, uh, sorry, uh, acrylic, uh, I don't know, charcoal, like marble kind of stem. Looks really good in the light. I don't see any fills in it, which, you know, I try not to buy pipes with fills. Uh, but uh, yeah, this one, this one's a workhorse. All right, it could be Savinelli, you know, it's Italy, you know, made for probably the Churchill's shop that somehow Arnold's, you know, procured it. And, um, and that was it. Uh, so that's what started me on this wonderful journey. And uh, quite a few followed, as I'm sure you can imagine. Um, so who else? Uh, who else has their hand up here? Uh, all right. So I see a few hands up. How, how about Matthias? Yeah, thank you. You're welcome. So I'm actually smoking uh, my first pipe currently. Uh, yeah, the Rat Race old uh, gallery. Uh, it's a bit dusty right now because I'm in the middle of sanding a pipe. But um, yeah, I bought this like seven or eight years ago. Uh, I was actually looking for a birthday present for a good friend. And uh, just on a whim, I yeah, felt like, yeah, a pipe maybe could be a good thing for him. He, he didn't smoke a pipe, but I felt like that that could be something for him. So I went into a tobacco shop, uh, asked them about pipes, and they showed me a bunch of pipes in a basket or in a yeah small bag. And I looked for a, a pipe for him. Uh, I think it was a Peterson, actually. And uh, while looking, I, I really felt, I, I fell in love with pipes, like the physical uh, things with pipe like feeling uh, the quality uh, and uh, I felt like yeah if I if I'm going to buy him a pipe then I might as well buy myself a pipe so I I bought this one and uh, this is yeah I, I haven't smoked very much in it I, I burnt my tongue quite a bit in the beginning smoking aromatics but uh, uh, just when this uh, meeting started, I actually drilled it out to four mils, and uh, yeah, it smokes really good. Uh, I can, I can uh, feel a little bit of taste from uh, from the old aromatics, but uh, it's fine. Um, and I, and I actually have a fun story about uh, my second pipe, as this is a straight pipe. I felt like uh, yeah, bent pipe that that would be a lovely. To have and being a beginner i don't know what, what to look for i went to ebay and uh, i was overbid on quite a quite a number of pipes that i wanted and then i saw this bent pipe square shank and i felt like yeah this is this is it and i just overcommitted. i, I, I bought it for too too much money uh, and i didn't know what to look for and uh, then it uh, came delivered to me and yeah, I, I didn't really look at uh, the weight of, uh, of this pipe. So this is a Mario Grande. Uh, it's 115 grams. So it's, it's a little bit uh, bigger than, than I would have wanted. So it's, yeah. So I, I've smoked this yeah, a couple of times, but it's too big. Uh, yeah. Yeah. After smoking that, when you get a job at Cirque du Soleil hanging from your teeth, right? <laughs> yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. uh, so. Uh, Quick, call on Bud before he, uh, before he explodes. Okay. Bud. So when I uh, started smoking, I was, had just turned 60, and I thought I'd get into uh, pipe smoking. The, uh, uh, I did a little bit of research. I uh, the YTPC had actually put the idea in my head. And, uh, so I, you know, checked out a few different things. And so I didn't want to spend a lot of money and I didn't want to have too big a pipe. And, uh, because I wasn't sure I was really going to like it. So I ended up buying a Dr. Graybo and, uh, this is a Lark and, 
see here if I can. Uh, so my little finger will not even go into the first knuckle. So that's how small it is. And uh, so that was my first pipe. I ended up buying some um, uh, Bengal slices. So that was my first uh, smoke in it. And uh, ended up going and buying a few other things. I remember one one Friday night, I hadn't told my wife I was smoking yet. And uh, she usually went out on Fridays and uh, did her casino thing. And so I ended up, uh, I think I smoked six bowls out of this pipe. And the next day, my tongue was so bad that, uh, you know, burned and stuff. I thought, well, I got to get another pipe. So I got a few more pipes along the way. Again, not spending too much money. But the other pipe that kind of uh, changed all that was I bought a Nordin uh, Signature, which is one of the unfinished pipes. And uh, bought that one. And that was just such a great smoker that really changed my whole you know, smoking experience and uh, really had allowed me to enjoy uh, pipe smoking a lot more, get a lot more out of it. Eventually, I, you know, discovered uh, there was a, a pipe club at my local brick and mortar and got there. And of course, those people helped uh, teach me more about uh, pipe smoking and tobaccos and saw a lot more pipes. And so now I have uh, probably too many, definitely have too many. And uh, let me see, uh, who else has their hand raised? Hey, Ryan, go ahead. Yep. I'm gonna see if I can redeem myself after two strikes. If I strike out on this one, I'm just gonna hang up and you know do the walk of shame. So um, when I was about 26 or seven, I don't know, I was just intrigued. I was in CVS, I bought a Dr. Rubo and um, Captain Black, what's the blue one? Is that Royal or whatever? No idea what I was doing. Um, burned my mouth up, I think for three days, four days afterwards. So promptly threw it in the trash and, um, you know, didn't didn't really look into it again until 2017. I had a friend that recommended I look into it as just a, a hobby, something to do to relieve stress. Um, so I went to smokingpipes.com and ordered a, like a starter pack. Um, with this tiny little pipe that looked like, you know, something Mr. Potato Head would use. Um, and uh, looking online, you know, just Googling what's a good tobacco for first time. And Lane 1Q seemed to be the the um, kind of the, the recommendation or whatever. So I ordered that. And I still don't really know what I was doing exactly, um, but I enjoyed the experience. So I stuck with it through some Facebook groups and whatnot, um, kind of got some of the recommendations like Golden Sliced, um, some other things. And then um, I got rid of that pipe just because it was so tiny and ridiculous. Uh, my wife bought me some basket pipe at local B&M um, and that, that was adequate for a while. And then um, one night on OfferUp, um, someone was selling a bunch of pipes and I thought, oh, what the heck? So she wanted, I think 75 bucks and I offered her 50 and, um, you know, showed up late at night, kind of the place where you look like you're going to get knifed to death. Um, and, uh, you know, came home and started going through what I had gotten and um, I'm moving. So I still have them. I just, you know, can't, I'm digging them out right now. This is uh, a little bit of a, you know, a bigger chore than I want to do. But there was a Ben Wade in there and uh, Carl's, Carl Eric and a few other things. And that Ben Wade was, that was really like kind of my aha moment. I think it was just it practically smoked itself. So um still have it really enjoy it um but yeah that's kind of how i got a little more serious and started a little bit more so hopefully that's not another strike but uh, i really don't want to hang up and, and walk away I, I enjoy hanging out with you guys when i've got the time so redemption anyone else redemption. volunteer that was good i don't think we've heard from patrick grant at all have we today sorry what was that we haven't heard from Patrick Grant yet today, have we? We have not. Patrick, you're on. Uh, no, I really don't have a first time story like anybody else's. Before the members got that started, I went to a place and I was working down in the financial district. Walk and Rex had their own. Uh, the keynote shop in the Wendy in the World Financial Center. So I happened to stop in there 
and the money ever back by, by that for this, and then David and then the uh, man graduated back to go from North to North, and it went down to the 2000s, like probably 2010, I bumped into a, a, a guy who was a member of the pipe the old pipe at the time, and he, he uh, said, hey, why don't you come along to the meeting? And he was one of the reasons why I got more into pipe smoking. Unfortunately, he was no longer with us, but you know, every time I do smoke a pipe, I was smoking in his memory. So I don't know if you look there, I know you know who I'm going to call Paul Coleman, who was on the same rather large. I think he had his family of origin was from Finland, the most territory. And very nice guy, smoked like a few other guys, not so smoked these pipes. But that is my story, which is that through him. And then I sort of pick up on a lot more of the the the, the ginger's and the and the English wine oh is how I say it. So that's my story. Thanks. Patrick, it's it's good to hear from you, man. I was trying to get you on earlier, but I couldn't get your uh, mute button off. I'm gonna I'm gonna uh, insert here for just a moment um, because before it gets too far in to the meeting and people start to wander off, we do have a little bit of news and update that I want to maybe have a uh, Rob and Ed talk about, and um, and then we can get back to uh, first pipe stories. These are we should just make a whole a whole video series on this. Um, so uh, for those of you who don't know, uh, Virtual Pipe Club is going to be sponsoring a slow smoke contest. Virtual, virtual slow, slow smoke. It's the first one we've done. And um, there's been a committee uh, who have been putting this together. And um, it sounds like it's going to be fantastic. And I'm going to get uh, Rob to uh, maybe give us an update. And Rob, whoever else you've been working with that maybe you want to have talk. So, Rob, why don't you take it away, bro? Um, yep, David and I have been talking, and um, you guys probably have all seen the uh, the post uh, about what pipe to do, and um, I think we're going to close those comments down probably tomorrow evening. Um, I'm looking right now to see where we're at in the... Uh, the standings of uh, the poll, but it looks like uh, a size three briar pipe. Last I saw was the uh, way we were headed. Rob, hold uh, up. Go back to the beginning because I think there are some people who have maybe not heard from the beginning of the story. So okay. let's let's lay it out for the people over there, especially on Facebook and, and YouTube who haven't. And but um, and also tell us if they have to figure out Facebook or whatever in order to be a part of the yeah. contest. Well, okay. So let's back up. We are going to do whatever you want to call it, a slow smoke, a long smoke. Um, and uh, it's going to be hard to kind of control. So we're, if, if Facebook, you know, we can't really do it with Facebook or YouTube because they're not live on the zoom. So um, we'd like to try to get people to, uh, let us know that they're going to be in. And I would say just tag on to any of the um, posts where we've been talking about the slow, slow smoke, uh, long smoke. But we have chosen Orlick Golden Slice. That will be the tobacco. Um, and if there are people on Facebook or YouTube, um, sorry, but we're, we're only going to really monitor Zoom. Um, but if you guys want to try to put that together on Facebook or uh, on the uh, um, YouTube channel, you can do that. But you guys are going to have to kind of monitor that and run it yourself. You can use the same start as we use. I mean, time's time. So if there's a delay, there's a delay. But your your time's still your time. But we're just going to monitor the the YouTube. I mean, I'm sorry. Back it up. The Zoom channel. Uh, we're not sure how that's going to work, but that's why we're asking for people to kind of pre-sign up for it. And that date is going to be June 5th. So you need to get your uh, 
Orlick Golden Slice on order. Um, we need to figure out which pipe we're going to use. And like I said, it looks like last I knew uh, Briar Size 3 pipe, which I got to be honest with you, I really don't even know what a Briar Size 3 pipe is. But it is a, a, a smaller pipe. If you've got a uh, one of the uh, virtual pipe club club pipes, uh, that would be adequate. Um, and um, I don't know, David, am I missing anything that you think needs to be said? Um, so we've talked about the date, June 4th. Talked about the fact that we're going to, going to monitor it on Zoom. So if you are a regular lurker over there on, on YouTube and Facebook, on that day, come on into the Zoom room crew. Um, if, uh, and, and then you'll be hooked and you won't ever want to not be on Zoom. Um, let's see, do we, are we, have we talked about prizes? Well, we, Rob and me, we discussed more like exactly what he said. We, he put the poll, it was either a briar or a corn cob or something else you have. The tobacco is the early golden slide and we gave people enough time to get it, at least in the States. Of course, with the shipping international, it's gonna be difficult, but if somebody else has, I don't know, capstan instead, or luxury navy flake, some other flake that is alike, we they can use that because I know internationally it's hard to ship. Those are the two big things. Um, again, like Rob and you said, it's going to be on the fifth on Zoom. If somebody else want to uh, do it somewhere else, we may need other people to do it. Like like David, you can probably monitor YouTube perhaps, and then. Um, we're going to try and see what happens. About prices, we didn't say anything yet. It may be a surprise that ended, but that's something that we can maybe say later. Um, a couple of us volunteer just to, to be the controller. So for example, since this page right now, we are 35 or about 36. And um, maybe I can monitor the first 25 people on this page and Rob can do the next page. And maybe Oliver can do page three um, so we can see write down who who is participating, when, how. Rob and me will appreciate if perhaps on the same post he put, not the poll, but the previous one he put, perhaps everybody put their names there so we know if we're going to be 22 or like 700. And the idea is to put the names there, and then based on that, we can put the names of everybody who is on each page. And then whenever saying, hey, I'm out, I can write down on my page and say, 37 minutes and blah, blah, blah. And then at the end, we can see who wins. Those are mostly the things that we discussed. The, unless the anybody other, else has suggestions. Well, the other thing that we, we wanted to make, uh, make this happen is uh, DDR and Oliver and Jurgen are, um, you know, we did our, uh, our pipe giveaway um, two months ago now. They did not participate in that because they didn't want it to be, seem like it was rigged. So we would like for them to not have to monitor anything. And I'll monitor. To... I'll help monitor. Rob. All right. Thanks, Mike. That way we can let let them participate. And um, like I said, uh, this is going to be an honor system, guys. I mean, that's that's the best we can do. You know, we're we're not going to be able to see when that that pipe all of a sudden goes underneath the table. You know. <laughs> or what have you. The, the other thing that David and I did talk about was um, most of your competitions have, you have two matches and you have 60 seconds to light your pipe. Now I'm outdoors um, and you know, the wind can blow a match out. So we would love for everybody to do matches but we also understand that that might not be with people that are outdoors possible. So basically, you know, try the match. If that doesn't work, have a lighter ready to go, get yourself lit. But once we say matches out, they're out, lighters out. So um, that was the only other thing. We will, um, it's two grams of uh, tobacco. I have not weighed out to see what that looks like in, in Orlick. Um, so 
uh, try to come up with some other measurements for those that can't measure in grams. It's about two and a half, but um, the other thing that we discuss is like, so we feel, oh, well, whoever participates, so feel the, the pipe folding the flake or are they ready? I mean, they can rub it and, and put it in. That's a yeah. full discussion. And what would happen with that, and these rules we'll, we'll try to write out to our best ability. Um, we don't want you to do anything to the tobacco until we tell you to. You're, you'll have a few minutes to prepare your tobacco however you want to do it. So not preparing it before, but you know, we're envisioning it as uh, when we go live right at the beginning, we'll tell everybody, you know, get your stuff ready. And then, you know, 10 minutes in, we're going to say, okay, start packing your pipes, guys. And uh, David and I'll keep talking so that you're not wasting your valuable time getting your pipe packed. And about five minutes later, we're going to say, all right, let's light them. And then a minute later, we're, we're going. Mm -hmm. So we want to give people a chance to get in. So that's why we're kind of waiting 10, 15 minutes into the show. And also like, from now that we're here, the usuals that we normally show up every Saturday, how many people from here doesn't have early golden slice and have something else instead? By the way, yeah. Ian just put up a, um, a link to where you can get or like in the UK. And I posted that um, on the Facebook YouTube group. So if you're going to participate and you're in, um, in Europe or wherever, and you, um, might want to know where you can get or like there's the link for you and um, uh, you know let let David and Rob know if you're having a hard time getting or like golden slice and, and they maybe can help you out a little bit yeah maybe if you guys could uh, throw your virtual hand up for those that can find it if you've got or like golden slice already um, and that way we can we can kind of see kind of hard to see all of you guys waving when you say you've got or like golden slice. So uh, if, if somebody, you know, or a few people can't get it or don't have it, um, I'd be willing to send people some, if, you know, just, if yeah. that's going to be the reason why they can't participate, just let me know. Yeah. I have a yeah. Thanks Mike. Yeah. And, and, and that's thing I can do if you want, like Rob said, we can put it maybe to Monday, we can post it again on top. Everybody who wants to participate, they can make a comment with their names and say it on the side, I have it or I don't, but I have capstan instead. So at least throughout the week, we can make a list of who has what and who's participating. Yeah. But again, June 5th is, is the date. Awesome. So David and, and um, Rob, thank you um, for helping to put this together. Mike, thank you for volunteering to be one of the um, the, the observers and also for the generous offer to help people out if they just can't get a hold of any Orlick Golden Slice. Um, the, the, the obvious comment that I need to make or want to make or should make is like, this is just for fun. We, you know, it's a, it's a club full of people who are here because we love the, you know, the hobby of or lifestyle or however you want to call it of pipe smoking and, this just could be a lot of fun. So don't take it too seriously. Please come on in. Give it a try if you've never done one. I'm going to actually try it because I've never done one before. And I'm terrible at, at staying slow at my smoking. So this will be, this will be fun. And so I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to do it too. Um, um, just to make people feel good. Like I participated in about eight, 10, my, my whole life. Two years, I tend to do 45 minutes to an hour most of the time. Two years ago, I lost nine minutes. So don't be embarrassed. They I probably wouldn't even be able to get a with two matches. And, and I relay my pipe like constantly. So then I'm like, I think I'll be a moderator. <laughs> yeah. That's that's yeah. the, when you're doing these things in person, you get your conversations going and so forth. And next thing you know, you're out. Um, all the competitions I've been to, you know, I think I told you guys this. We've got one guy that, that participated that had his headphones in, and I don't remember whether he was listening to music or a podcast. But, I mean, he, he didn't look up the whole competition. He ended up taking second place. He went like an hour and 20 minutes or something like that. Ed can probably correct me. But, uh, 
you know, there's guys that are intense like that. And that's fine. That's great. I, mean, I, I think there's, there's a recording out that goes puff, puff, rest. Yes, but do not put your poker face with sunglasses, headphones, and nothing like that. <laughs> yeah, and 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 I'll say so. You guys met Chris Karras, who's what six-time world champion or something. And uh, two months ago, when he was doing it, he went out in nine minutes. <laughs> so, mm -hmm. I've been places where people last like three and a half hours, and everybody's like, "Can you please light it? Can you please finish? We're bored here." Yeah. <laughs> Like, for example, you, Ed, you cannot participate like that. We don't know what's behind your glasses. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've got a lighter back here going. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, but like DDR said, guys, this is going to be for fun. Um, I, I, I just see that it's going to be fun. I really believe that. we got a great group of guys and, and ladies. I don't know if we've got any ladies today yet, but um, it'll, it'll be a good time. And uh, we'll we'll be able to make fun of other people, uh, relighting after they're out. And, you know, maybe what we can do, you know, at the K Woody Pipe Club Pipe Show, we where they have a slow smoke contest, and whenever somebody goes out, everybody just gives a little a little rap on the table, like a congratulations, good effort. Maybe we could do something like that here, like just give a thumbs up to people or something like that, so we keep the good fun aspect going. Mm -hmm. Great idea. Rob, I just wanted to have one clarification. I have never uh, done this before, so it's going to be the first time experience for me. Uh, you know, I understand, the, I mean, there are only few attempts to light the pipe initially. Is there any such restriction on how many times you should can tap, tap the ash? No. 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 There's, um, there's, and there, there are rules on different ones on that and i think for our club we're not going to get into that but there are ones that say you can't do anything to your pipe with a tamp unless it's in your mouth and then there's ones there's ones that you the can pipe, take it not the tamp. yeah yeah you can take that mm -hmm. but and, that and pipe stick in your mouth <laughs> yeah it has to be in your mouth wherever you, at least with the controllers we can see and also in other things i know for example in europe you cannot puff internally like, like like this and make this blowing in and out in you cannot do that in the states you can um we're not going to be able to control that uh, uh, on uh, on this format so you know i i really don't have a problem if you pull the pipe out and you tamp it um i think the key is guys keep your pipe visible don't drop it below just that way you know you can be the honestest person in the world, but you know, if you drop it below the screen, the camera, who knows what's going on. If you so, have two pipes alike, make sure your wife is not around who can relight another one and you guys exchange <laughs> under the table. <laughs> things like that are not I, I never even thought about that. No. Well <laughs> I was glad that Rizzo volunteered mm -hmm. because you know, with all those Costellos that he's got there. Are, is it Costellos you got, Rizzo? Yeah, but I can't keep them lit worth of shit, so it doesn't really matter. Well, that's why we were concerned, because your wife could be handing them to you, you know? So we're glad that you're now monitoring. <laughs> yeah, that's true. <laughs> you know, I think that um, Rob and David have done a really good job trying to keep the rules to a minimum. I mean, there's we got to have some rules. we got to have some structure on this. But especially as our first go-around at this, not having too many rules will give us a chance to see what works and what doesn't work. You know, and then we'll do another one, you know. Yeah. Uh, it, well, when we have get togethers, I think we should always have, if if we're at a pipe show, we should always have. I was just going to say that once, you know, all this crap's over and we can actually have a meetup. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, hey, we um, can meet up in Michigan now. I'm all, I'm, uh, I'm set up, by the way, just, just as an FYI. Um, I know for a fact I'm going to both uh, Richmond and to um, West Coast Pipe Show. And I plan on, if they don't cost an arm and a leg and a small child, getting a, a suite for us so that we can all hang out and, uh, you know, have have our meetings and, and swap shirts and stuff like that and high fives and whatever. So I'm hoping to see you guys there. This, this is the time when you nod your heads and go, that sounds like a great idea. We're trading <laughs> shirts. Speaking of that, 
Oh, you don't know about that? So, Mike, he, so I don't know if any of you have ever done um, high-level sports competitions, you know, national sports or Pan Am or whatever, but it's a kind of oh, a tradition. jerseys. At, at the end of, uh, yeah, jerseys or whatever, at the end of, of, the, okay. of the competition, the athletes kind of go around and, and trade jackets or, you know, uh, jerseys like that, yeah. No, not like the shirt that I, you know, have been sleeping in. No, not like that. <laughs> I want to mention too, um, I can post it again, but I received information from the people from Columbus that the show is still on. Um, if anybody wants to go to Columbus, maybe we can discuss another day about that. I think that's in August. It's going to be August 13th and 14th. Well, being that uh, I uh, volunteered to be a moderator, I'm, I'm expecting somebody to volunteer to watch my four kids so I can go to one of these types of <laughs> Bring them along. We'll find somebody to watch them for you, Mike. I'm not traveling with those pack <laughs> of hyenas. Hmm. Well, uh, before we get too far afield, there was a few people who uh, still hadn't um, had a chance to talk about their first pipes, and and it's such a good topic. And uh, again, Rob, David. You guys are awesome. Thank you for putting all that together. And uh, we'll get more updates as we get closer. Um, Steph is on uh, YouTube over there watching and has volunteered to donate for prizes in case we go that route. So I'm going to make sure that uh, you guys follow up with her. And um, just to remind you, check out the hats, man, that Steph makes. Those <laughs> I'm in it for the hats. Yeah, I'm in it for yeah. the hats. Right, 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 right. Um, let me uh, let me go back, Andrew, my uh, my brother in the Eldritch world, um, and uh, get him to to kick us off yes. back. Thank you, David. Um, so uh, talking about my first pipe, I think my my first pipe. I mean, I haven't been smoking all that long compared to a lot of folks here, but my first pipe, um, I did get a Doctor Grabo Grand Duke, which I still have, and it's a small little pipe like uh, Bud was showing. Um, and it's a great little pipe. I still smoke it. Um, and I think the first tobacco actually, because I was, I mean, I did tell a story. I mean, I, I had smoked my very first time was with a friend of mine who got me started. Um, and it was, you know, some cherry tobacco. But um, when I really started, I, I did the YouTube research and uh, uh, my first tobacco was, um, uh, my, was the uh, morning blend. Um, early morning uh, pipe from uh, Dunhill. And so it was a good experience, actually. I was, uh, I over-engineered it, uh, you know, thought it out too much, but I, but it worked out, you know, it, it was a good experience. But um, talking about just what's interesting, uh, Matthias was showing his pipes. Um, actually, I went to, uh, I used to travel before COVID almost every other week out to California. And my company's based in uh, near San Jose. And there's a pipe shop there called Edwards, which sadly is closed now. Um, and I went in there and was talking to them and I wanted to get a pipe and they had these, um, pipes and I saw one that caught my eye and it's, it's this, uh, uh Maestro Baraldi pipe and, um, has a really awesome blast on it. It's not coming out so well in the shade, but, um, when I first saw it, it reminded me of, uh, you know, a, a fishing basket, a fly fishing basket that they used to wear. And so it really caught my eye and. Um, you know, I picked it up, not knowing at the time too much about it and brought it home and smoked it. Um, and it's just, it's still, I mean, it smoked amazing. It was one of the first pipes that I owned that just smoked so fantastic that I kind of, it clicked with me and I really, really kind of got me deep into, into enjoying pipe smoking. And actually Maestro Baraldi later, I found out, um, the Maestro, uh, the Grandis, which, uh, Matthias showed, that's their second, uh, line, um. Sadly, I don't think they make pipes anymore. I think the family may have retired from pipe smoking. Um, but uh, that was my my first uh, real pipe experience. And from there, it's just gotten worse with uh, thanks to Mike at Prior Blues. And you know, I've got some Costellos and other nice pipes and Ashtons that I really love. But uh, that was uh, what started me off. So, um, All right. Who's, uh, who's next? I see uh, Miguel's got his hand raised still. Miguel, you want to talk about your uh, pipes? Sure. Thanks. Uh, thank you, Andrew. Um, I still have sort of my first pipe, like a 2.0. Uh, basically, this is the one right here. 
Um, it's a Sabinelli Melita uh, 404. So back in the 70s, you can get this probably for 30 bucks or 35 bucks of Sabinelli. So I've been smoking. The only reason why I decided to take it, it's a good smoker. And uh, for whatever reason, I don't know why, uh, somebody stole it from one of the hotels in Vancouver. So I posted on our website, uh, on our Facebook page, that it became my, uh, uh, what we call a grail, because I've been trying to basically find one, and it's hard to get it because it's back in the 70s. So one day, I basically look every day from Etsy's eBay, and then I finally found that actually the, in uh, it's actually listed on, on Etsy. And this uh, three retired um, Italian um, club maker, Gerber, is selling it. So I emailed the guy. I uh, even talked to him on the phone. And I basically said to him, I'm going to give you what you wanted for the pipe, but there's only one basically request that I, wa I want you to do for me. And I said, I don't want you to clean the pipe. It doesn't matter how dirty it is, even though it's a smoke, I do not want to, to touch, uh, for you to touch the, 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 uh, the pipe. And I said, yeah, not a problem. The next morning, I got an email from him, and his business partner basically cleaned the, the stem. And the only reason why I want him not to touch the pipe, because there is a logo on this pipe. It's like a gold um, kind of powder logo and that's the reason why i don't want him to touch the pipe and then he did so basically he told me it's like i can save i can uh refund you the money uh if you want and i said no no no, no. just send it to me so that's basically uh you know it's like a, my my uh new pipe 2.0 so it's the same thing with david martinez ruiz if i got kidnapped by uh by a terror and basically, they demanded for me to get rid of all my pipes. I will tell the children, give everything I have, just leave this one. That's how, I, that's how much I love this pipe. So I told them, give them everything. If they said pipe, give them the pipe. If they said, well, not only the pipe, it's a collection of scotch whiskey, give them everything, but don't give this pipe. What a, so, what a strange terrorist. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. It's like because uh, you know, hopefully somebody's watching this, uh, this, and then they know that I have some, you know, some good pipes. But if they want my pipes, give them everything they want. It just, just leave this pipe. So this pipe will basically like uh, David Martinez Ruiz. I want to be buried with. I want to be buried with this with this pipe. Oh, and by the way, not just this pipe. The basically the McBaron HH for pure Virginia blend. <laughs> All right, so I'll uh, pass Let, it to... Hold on, because uh, Pablo's right. That's a very strange terrorist. So, John, in North Carolina, um, I think this is the solution to your gas crisis. Uh, you should you know, tell uh, the, the gas companies to, uh, to try to negotiate for pipes instead of you know, $8 million. Maybe, maybe, they'll, maybe they'll take them up on it. That's exactly. Absolutely. I'll, I'll, I'll take that as a handoff here. I'll try to be... Okay, all right. Uh, a lot like Dennis, I had to run in with the pipe, smoking John Rolfe peach brandy tobacco. A lot like smoking molten lead. Uh, it was not a good experience, but I was probably 18, 19 years old. So I've, I've had a lot of pipes over the years uh, from, from the pipe. My oldest one is this guy right here. It's actually it's what's called an intermission pipe. I bought this from Levin and Pierce in Cambridge along with cake box tobacco. And, and the backstory on why I have this small pipe, I was stationed, I was in the Navy, I was stationed in Japan, Naval Security Group Detachment, Kamaseya. Kamaseya duty station in the 60s had a hellacious fire, killed 22 sailors. Long, long story and a, and a very, very ugly story too about how all that happened. So smoking on the comm floor was uh, not, not a favorite thing to do. But we could take smoke breaks. So I needed a pipe that I could smoke during my smoke break when we would go outside and basically stand in the middle. Kamaseas was in the middle of Japanese farm field, by the way. Uh, stand in the, in, the, in the middle of the farm field in, in the uh, antenna field and get the pipe done. So it's been a, it's been a good pipe. Uh, I have not smoked it for years. And to be honest, I hadn't thought about it for years 
until we started getting into what's your oldest pipe and how, how did you come to get it? Just a brief story here. The one that got me smoking pipes again is this Meerschaum, which is a medical pipe. It's currently in emeritus status because it finally cracked. I bought this probably in 74 after I came back to the States. It was, it was a good smoking pipe. It was a filter pipe. Um, and I used it for years. But my real, real go-to pipe that I kicked in with that got me really going was this, this Ben Way, which is a huge pipe. I bought it because I, I liked it. This came from uh, Tenderbox uh, in Richmond, Virginia, as a matter of fact. And it's been, a, it's been a great smoker and I still smoke it from time to time. Let me pass this on back to Steve who's smoking cardboard. Hello everyone. Um, so before Christmas of 2018, <clears throat> I uh, told my wife that I was interested in trying pipe pipe smoking. I wanted a Christmas present. And I, I didn't really know what I was getting into. I just kind of uh, had a fun memory of a college classmate who had a pipe and I thought it might be fun every once in a while to get a pipe. So I, I got one and I don't have that pipe anymore. Uh, I think it was just kind of like one of those um, Amazon uh, kits that you kind of get with a pouch and a tamper and a stand and a pipe. And I went to uh, Reddit was kind of my university of pipes. Uh, I was learning more about it and I kind of got scared away from using it because I, I, didn't, I didn't know if it was dry or I didn't know what material was out of this pipe. So I didn't really use it much. And I ended up buying um, this Stanwell pipe. Um, I don't know if you can see, see it very well because it's so bright now. Um, <clears throat> And this pipe uh, was kind of, uh, I knew it was a briar pipe and I didn't want to spend too much money on a pipe uh, that I didn't think I would be using very much. Um, but then um, the more I got into it, the more I learned uh, there was a lot. You can just pick up a pipe and just occasionally, you know, whenever you got to a campfire, smoke a pipe and actually learn this hobby very well. And so then I started acquiring more pipes and tobaccos and finding the white TPC. Uh, but then I had another kind of aha moment with pipes uh, that changed. Um, I've been listening to Simon London Calling and I avoided all the filters at the beginning because I, I thought it was kind of a health reasons thing. Um, but then I decided because of getting tongue bit and stuff that maybe nine mils would help. And so I ended up getting a uh, Savinelli. Um, this is a 606 KS. I, I got this, uh, it was a used pipe um, from Europe that I got this nine mil. And that was kind of um, me switching over my all my pipes over to nine mils. So um, that's kind of, the history of my pipes. Justin? Hey. Yeah, so um, I guess when I was about 15 or 16, probably 16, I, my uncle came to live with us and uh, he was a chain smoker and uh, he got a pipe to try to quit smoking it didn't work, but uh, he got a gray bow pipe, uh, one, one very similar to this, uh, an Omega, and uh, a bag of top uh, what was it top value amaretto, and um, it was sitting on the, the banister behind the couch, and uh, I could smell it while I was watching TV, and I was like, "What is that smell? I gotta know." what that tastes like. You know, I never really smoked anything before. My old man smoked a pipe for years when I was a kid. So, you know, I figured, well, I'll give it a shot. So I, I, you know, I packed it up as best I could. Didn't really know what I was doing. And uh, I loved it. 
absolutely loved it. I didn't burn my tongue the first time. It was really smooth, delicious, super sweet. And uh, yeah, so I kind of kind of stole his pipe and the tobacco and was smoking that for a while. It was a big pound bag, so smoked that for quite a while. And uh, eventually I kind of, I don't know, I ran out of tobacco and I just didn't feel like smoking anymore. So I quit for several years. And uh, I guess probably about 15, 20 years. And then um, I decided I wanted to try it again. So I got a, another one, another uh, Dr. Graybo. And uh, I actually bought two pipes. Where's the other one? Oh, here it is. At the same time, this was supposed to be a billiard when I ordered it, but it came in as an apple. What are you going to do? And uh, I checked out YouTube for, you know, instructions on how to do it right. And uh, I came across Mutton Chop Piper, and he was always going on about English blends. So I decided to get a, a tin of White Knight, because he was always going on about White Knight. And I tried that out, and uh, it just blew my mind. I thought, you know, all tobacco was going to be aromatic. But when I tried the White Knight, it was like, tastes like incense. And, and I don't even know what else. It was just amazing. And uh, so... This one changed my pipe career, my pipe journey. Um, how about Jurgen? I see you got your hand up. Yeah. Oh, wow. So, uh, excuse me for joining late. I was uh, at, a, um, uh, at a dinner with a good friend and it was a delicious meal. Uh, and so I had now the chance to talk about my first pipe and I have it here. It's uh, what you call a basket pipe. And I have it now for 19 years. And this was a, a pipe that I smoked almost eight or nine years, uh, very heavy. It's a hell of a smoker. And uh, the brand is Venini. Nobody really knows uh, who is uh, behind that brand. I think Denny Cortea could be possible. And I have also had the first tobacco that I ever smoked uh, serious, um, seriously. It's the Danish black vanilla, and it's not a good tobacco. <laughs> As I mentioned, I've, uh, I started with uh, heavy arom aromatics. It's a vanilla tobacco, uh, all black Cavendish, and everything that I don't like right now. Um, and I've had, and I had tried this, uh, two months ago, but I, I, I don't like it, uh, at, as much as, as it was, uh, in the beginning, but I tried a lot of tobaccos, um, in different styles. I had then, then from 2004, it, it was 2002 then, when I started really smoking the pipe, um, I had a little um, experimental phases in my youth as somebody you had experienced it. I smoked uh, cigarettes for, for a short period of time, mostly non-filtered. Yeah. Oliver, you know what, 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 what brand <laughs> you have it in the house. <laughs> that was my favorite, a really heavy uh, cigarette. Um, and then I had from 2002 uh, to 2004, I tried a lot of um, aromatics and then I switched over to non-aromatic tobaccos or light aromatics. And, uh, and I've almost smoked six years, uh, only one tobacco. It was the uh, series from the uh, My Own Blend series. And then uh, they, the tobacco went out of the market in Germany. So I had to start uh, to find new tobaccos. and. Now I'm here with uh, 15 to 20 tobaccos already open all the time. And I like a lot of uh, varieties. That is what I had to say. And uh, why I started smoking the pipe? Well, I had, uh, when, I, when I began smoking the pipe, I had a uh, unlucky relationship. So I had to please myself a little bit. <laughs> so, and uh, I picked up the pipe. It had, had nothing to do with uh, Lord of the Rings. 
which is in my generation a thing. Uh, all of the fallen, a um, lot of the ring pipes was a big deal back then, uh, but I'm, I'm not so, uh, I'm a really huge uh, Lord of the Ring fan. That is not a problem, but the pipes I don't like so much. I like a, a real mouthpiece and not, not a long wooden stem. So that is my story uh, for my first pipe. Ramachandran, would you uh, tell us what let's, the question um, let, here again? Is let's that go a nine millimeter or not? Yes, it's a nine millimeter, of course. Back Let, then I, I only smoked nine millimeter. Today, uh, the last uh, quarter year, I started smoking more non-filtered. Let's go to Ramachandran, and then Ramachandran, if you will pass it to Kent, because Kent's been yeah. uh, trying to raise his hand there, and then we're going to kick everybody out. Um, but uh, Ramachandran, let, let's yeah, hear your story, man. Before we kick everybody out, I have a shout out at the end. Okay, we'll go to Ramachandran, then Kent, then Oliver. We'll we'll wrap it up for us. Up, oh, you're on mute there, my friend Ramachandran. You're on mute. Well, my story begins about uh, 10, 12 years ago <clears throat> in Delhi, where I live, we do not have uh, so many shops. There used to be one shop which was selling, you know, fragrances, perfumes, Indian perfumes, where there was a small counter for uh, tobacco related products, also snuff, snuff uh, powders and things like that. One day I noticed uh, some pipes also he had along with some pipe tobaccos. So I went in and asked him to suggest me something to begin my pipe smoking. So what he suggested me was a Captain Black uh, aromatic uh, pouch along with uh, a pipe, which also says Captain Black, which I, I'm not too sure whether Captain Black manufactures uh, pipes also. Anyway, I started off with these two. And as it happened with uh, many beginners, Initially, I didn't find it very uh, enjoyable. Too much rituals to keep it light and things like that. The, all the initial te teething problems. Then I shifted to cigars for some time. For about uh, six, seven years, I, shift, I, was, I used to smoke cigars. Then in YouTube, I watched Mutton Chop Piper. Then, you know, that uh, video revived that interest for me in... Uh, going back to pipes once again and started. In between, a friend of mine had gifted me a Dr. Grabo pipe when he had come from US. I don't know where I've uh, kept it. But anyway, when I started, uh, restarted my piping woe, I ordered this one from Danish pipe shop, a small falcon. And in it, I got some uh, tobaccos from smokingpipe.com. I don't remember which one, uh, the first one was there. And I started smoking and, you know, I used to see this Mutton Chop Piper's uh, video on YouTube quite frequently. And that helped me to take an interest in pipe smoking. And now today, my cigar smoking is very, very occasional. And I'm 24 by seven uh, smoking pipes and pipe related things and I'm very interested. And uh, I got into this uh, pipe addiction uh, syndrome. I ended up buying almost uh, 60, 70 pipes. And uh, one of the pastimes that I indulge in is, you know, going to all these websites and going through the pipes and tobaccos and accessories. And I ended up uh, buying out this part of the moment kind of a decision. And that's how I'm today. That's where I am today with so many pipes and so many, and I'm now addicted to this kind of a fabulous uh, hobby. That's my story. That's awesome. So Mr. Kent, you can take over. So let's go to Kent. Kent, are you there, brother? Uh, you're on mute. Oh, there we go. Okay. Sorry. you got to hit that button. You can't just look at it. Um, so tele telepathy does not work. Uh, this is a Missouri Mersham uh, legend. My first pipe. 
Um, I was blessed with a chance to uh, go on uh, on three separate summers, uh, some uh, summer research projects uh, in between uh, college terms, and uh, and really enjoyed them. At one of them in Maine, one of the uh, the the directors, uh, scientific people back then, smoked pipes. It's just what you did. And he also drove a uh, Westphalia um, uh, VW uh, camper. That's how he uh, spent his summers was doing that kind of teaching and uh, and living in his uh, his van, not down by the river, but down by the bay. Uh, that's another song. So uh, he smoked um, amphora full aroma uh, out of his uh, corn cob pipe and my high school biology teachers also were pipe smokers and that and an uncle or two uh, were inspirations for me so I figured it's about time for me to to get with it <clears throat> and uh, so I uh, I got the pipe and I got the uh, amphora full aroma and uh, really enjoyed it didn't have any problems with uh uh, with tongue bite or anything like that, like a lot of, of, of people do uh, right at first. I don't know exactly how, um, probably because I'm uh, allergic to pain. So I did anything I knew to avoid that. Uh, but yeah, after that, uh, I uh, my next uh, pipe was a basket pipe from uh, the, uh, uh, the bookstore at uh, Harvard. And uh, I didn't go to Harvard. I visited it and went to the bookstore and picked out a pipe or two from their basket. And uh, then it was Englishes after that. And uh, uh, this legend is when I uh, made the mistake of getting rid of all the other pipes that I had, which was like seven at the time. Um, I, uh, I kept this one because I can't, still can't part with it. And uh, it's lots of good memories of uh, not just doing research, but uh, fly fishing and hiking and uh, all the things that, uh, that I used to really enjoy. And uh, so it's my, uh, my connection to not just the past, but uh, to so many good memories, especially outdoor memories. So who's next? Anyone? We're going to... We're going to go to Oliver to help us bring it on home. Um, Kent, that's a great story. A great story. You, you, start, you started to talk about a um, Westphalia camper. I had one of those too. So good, good times. <laughs> um, Oliver? Yeah. yeah. So at the end, um, I, have to, I have to do a big shout out to our friend Louis Cabon. So I was pretty busy the whole show to approve invitations, member invitations for our club, because Louis Carbon invited at least hundreds of new members to our club. So that my job was to approve all the people. And that shows us that we are doing a, a really good job as a club. And some people love to stay with us every time when we come together. And this is amazing so more than 100 invitations doing the show that's unbelievable thank you very much louis and it's 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 so great thank you thank you thank you uh, oliver uh, thank you so very much uh and why shouldn't i share this wonderful experience with uh other brothers and sisters who enjoy what we do here and uh i do have to tell you oliver david uh i i enjoy so much these afternoons with all of you wonderful people. I look forward to it so much during the week. And uh, I just can't help myself. I have a lot of pipe smoking friends and uh, why not share that, uh, share the experience with them if they, hopefully they choose to, uh, to join us. And uh, it's just a wonderful time. Thank you, Oliver, I appreciate it. And I appreciate Thank everybody, Thank everybody you. here as well, coming together on Saturday afternoons or evenings, whatever it might be in your time. In your, in your time zone. And uh, again, thank you, thank you. Thank you. Wonderful job. Thank you. You're very thank welcome. You. I want to echo I what Louis just said there. One thing, uh, 
every uh, second Tuesday of the month, uh, we have New York Fight Club virtual meeting. And everybody is welcome. And the Lou yeah. always invites everybody. So uh, you can uh, uh, look up on a Facebook, New York Fight Club. We also have a website where you can just contact Lou or me, and we'll give you a link to our Zoom meeting and uh, the more the merrier. So we, uh, in New York Pipe Club, we never exclude anybody. Everybody is always uh, welcome. So we'll be happy to see more people at our meetings as well. When Absolutely. is that, Dimitri? Uh, second Tuesday of every month. Uh, so we just had one uh, last Tuesday. Yeah, thanks so for telling us now. next one will be in June. <laughs> <laughs> Stay late in a dollar short. Yeah, that's my story. <laughs> All right. What if that, you're a Red Sox fan? On, on that note, walk. on Still that walk. note, I'm gonna I'm gonna bring <laughs> us home. Uh, I do this every every weekend when I say as much fun as we're having here. <clears throat> I do know that you have families, um, many of us, and uh, I don't want you guys to get in trouble so that you can come back next week. And just like Lou said, you know, this is a, a great experience. I I really, Lou, I really appreciate you. Really my pleasure. Do. It's absolutely my pleasure. So thank you, Lou. We appreciate it. Do we have to wash our hands and put the mask now that it's over? Well, we um, I will say, you know, like I've I got my vaccines early because I'm a vet, but um, now they say that if you get your vaccination, it's almost 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 back to normal. Yeah, so normal. Uh, so do yourself a favor, uh, if nothing else, so that we can go hook up at the pipe show. Like, I, you know, I say I don't want to get political in, in the club here because, you know, I love you guys and I want to keep it all friendly. But come to the pipe show, get your vaccines, wash your hands, do what you need to do so I can see you here next weekend. And then I think smoking. the hand washing is a good rule for the rest for, of your life. For, for most, yes. <laughs> yes. By the way, Mama always said. <laughs> on that note, thank you guys for being here. I will see you next Saturday. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. See you. Bye. See, see, you see you, guys. Thank you. Bye. See you, guys. or turn off desk lights.